Welcome, everyone. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this absolutely beautiful day of celebration. And we thank you for the family and friends that have gathered here with us to rejoice in it. Lord, we thank you for your blessing on Valley Forge Christian College and for the men and women who have come here for a season to serve, to grow, and to learn. Lord, we invite your presence in this place because ultimately this day is all about you and the mercy and grace poured out upon us through your son, Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing on this commencement ceremony today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome. Welcome to the 73rd annual commencement of Valley Forge Christian College. Since 1939, God has been raising up leaders from this college to change the world. Graduates, the time you have set aside for preparation is coming to a close. The time to venture into the harvest field is near. You are surrounded by friends, family, fellow students, and the leadership of the college. We are assembled here to honor you. Our thoughts, prayers, and encouragement are for you to excel in all you do. Our sentiment for you is to enjoy every moment of this commencement ceremony. To our assembled guests, we welcome you to the campus for this special day of celebration. Your support and commitment to the education of these graduates is deeply appreciated. We invite you to enjoy this day of celebration with the class of 2012. May God bless you. I would just make mention to you that we are watching the weather radar very closely. And uh, should there be any imminence of severe weather that would necessitate our suspending this service, uh, we would do so. And then we would take about a one hour break to reconvene in the Flower Chapel. But if you need to find your way out of the outdoors because the weather is severe, we would ask you to move into the Anvil or into Cardone Hall or to the Storms Research Center. Those spaces would be available for you to wait until we would resume the service. Let's trust that that plan does not have to be put in place, but it is available should it be needed. <clears throat> Restrooms are located behind me in a variety of buildings. The Alumni Association has bottled water and snacks for sale at the tent that's located to my left and to your right. Uh, this service is being uh, uh, videotaped so it can be available to be viewed on the website and is being webcast currently at this time. And we would also ask that you would honor that we are a smoke-free campus and if you please honor that we would be most appreciative. Thank you very much.
stand for today's reading. Reading comes from 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11. For this, reason, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to your goodness knowledge, and to your knowledge self-control, and to your self-control perseverance, and to your perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to your mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never st stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Perhaps you have noticed if you're following the program that we've made some modifications in the light of the potential weather. So we have uh, tried to expedite our service today. <clears throat> we arrive at the awards portion of our service and we want to acknowledge those who are the honorees in the Sigma Chi Pi Honor Society. The purpose of Sigma Chi Pi is to encourage and honor outstanding academic scholarship, approved Christian character, and Christian leadership demonstrated by graduates of post-secondary schools endorsed by the Assemblies of God. <clears throat> we are acknowledging today three honorary members going into Sigma Chi Pi from the class of 1987, Reverend Jeffrey Hartensfeld, from the class of 1991, Mr. Court Dukalski, and from the class of 2000, Mr. Mark San Giovanni. We also want to acknowledge the current class of 2012, those who are being honored by their entrance into Sigma Chi Pi. The students, as your name is called, we would invite you to come to the platform. We have a token for you, and we'd ask you to remain as a group there are a dozen or so, so if we can just file across the platform, that would be fine. Please come forward as your name is called for the 2012 graduates membership. Brooke Coyne. <clears throat> Adrian Dyke. Tyler Hunt. Kristen Jenkin. Stacy Johnson, Bryce Carper, Joshua McInnes, Stephanie Saxton, Marissa Shade, Christina Sui. Lisa Williams. These are the 2012 inductees into the Sigma Chi Pi Honor Society. As they have all arrived on the platform, let's congratulate them. Congratulations, all. Thank you very much. You can return to your seat.
Good afternoon, friends. This is indeed a beautiful afternoon, and we rejoice with uh, the beauties of this day. Green Lane Commons, which connects us with our heritage from the past and the present and the limitless possibilities of tomorrow. We welcome our internet audience also that's joining us from so many parts of the world. Uh, we have a communication that has come to us from our general superintendent, Dr. George Wood, and he says, first, you came to Valley Forge Christian College to re receive, you stayed at Valley Forge Christian College to grow, you're not the same person you were three or four years ago, and third, you leave to give. Your faith, character, and conduct have matured and you're ready to go and change the world. Uh, we also want to thank the class of 2012 for the donation of another tree on our campus as part of an initiative to have a tree planted for every class that is part of the history of, North, of Eastern Bible Institute, Northeast Bible Institute, Northeast Bible College, and in these years, Valley Forge Christian College. Before I introduce our guest speaker this afternoon, I would like his wife, Pat DeBartolo, who is seated over here next to Evie. Pat, would you stand so we can welcome you this afternoon? So wonderful that you could come today. We are blessed today to have as our graduation speaker, Jack DeBartolo, Jr., architect extraordinaire. Uh, Jack, too, as he is known uh, by so many of us, uh, been, was affiliated with the college uh, about 20 years, a uh, number of years prior to uh, my coming to Valley Forge. 1997, when Don and Ruth Storms made their commitment to build a new library, Jack, too, was the obvious person to contact. Everywhere you look on this campus, just about literally, you can see his influence. He, along with his firm, with his son, Jack Three, designed the Vessel of Light, which is the Storms Research Center, Renaissance Academy facilities, Bongiorno Hall, Cardone Hall, the remodeling of the Flower Chapel, the Hartwick House, the Kremples Theater. Uh, he has received a host of design and the contractors construction awards for a number of those buildings. But in addition to designing buildings, he also is a campus architect and the design of our master plan for our whole campus has his influence and leadership on it so that the footprints of our buildings are for a space that could take up to eventually 2000 students. His qualifications are world-class, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Architecture degrees from University of Houston, uh, Master's degree in Architecture, Columbia University, New York City, William Kind Fellows Traveling Fellowship, founding partner in a firm, Anderson DeBartolo Pan Inc., 1972 to 1996, and more recently, 1996 and following, DeBartolo Architects. His projects, over $1 billion in value, award-winning, architectural project in the U.S. and overseas. He's actively involved in the American Institute of Architects at the national level, served on executive committee. He also served as the chancellor of the National American Institute of Architects College of Fellows in 1997. The persons are uh, voted to join that group and it's less than 2% of all the architects in the United States. Uh, they have won a host of awards and uh, we are so very grateful he has also published, taught, lectured, and so forth. Uh, but it's more than just being an architect. He also has served on the board of trustees of the First Assembly of God Church in Phoenix, Arizona, with uh, Tommy Barnett, where he is the pastor, Tommy Barnett. Uh, we will always be grateful to Jack DeBartolo for his incredible leadership and influence on our campus. Few people, not an overstatement, few people have influenced this campus more in the last 20 years than our guest speaker today. But more than a world-class architect, uh, he also is a dear friend, he also is a man of God, 
and he has woven in his deep spirituality his giftings and discipline as an architect to express God's anointing through the craft that God has given him. Thank you, Jack Tu, for your amazing legacy and your ongoing influence on all of us and also on me. You are a dear friend. Come share with us today. God bless you. Wow. <laughs> Is that me? I'm just a young man like all of you, except I'm much older. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, you are a delightful group of people. And uh, I have enjoyed my year. So I congratulate you, class of 2012. And uh, we'll make that official in a few moments. But still, you are very deserving of my congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Meyer, and Board of Trustees, and President's Cabinet, and wonderful faculty that have worked with us over the years, and staff. I want to thank you, Board, for giving us the liberty to practice architecture. We developed a new colonialism. I think. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you for your, for your generosity in giving us liberty to be artists and to practice in that profession. Uh, I am a fan of Valley Forge from a boy. My sister, when I was around 10 years old, arrived at EBI, class of 51, then came on staff from uh, 51 to 57, and today, she happens to be, she would be, she passed away about five years ago this summer, but today would have been her and Richard, Reverend Richard McDaniel's 55th anniversary. And Richard is here today, and I just want to thank you, Richard, for coming to listen to your old brother-in-law, but it is a, May the 4th is a special day, I know, in your life, and I, I want to congratulate you and pray that God will fill that void of that little dynamo of a sister I had, five foot tall, and we could never wear her out except she just quit one day. So anyway, she's with the Lord, and we thank God for that. I want to talk to you today. If, well, first of all, it's such an honor to be here today, to speak to this class of 2012. And more importantly than architectural design to me is your, the ability for me to be able to think that I could inspire young people, but I love young people. Pat and I have 10 grandchildren, three children, and uh, we love youthfulness, and uh, something all of us enjoyed, and now you're enjoying it, and we're celebrating while you do. But I am very happy to be here today to impact, see if I could do something and create in you a high impact life. I think that's the, one of the most wonderful things that could happen. I want to talk to you about a journey of intentional living, living intentionally. And uh, so many of us seem to live from uh, not being intentional, but to be sometime reckless. So somewhere between recklessness and intentionality is a balance that I'd like to challenge you to think about this afternoon. I know you're the millennial generation. And I'm the silent, I don't like that generation, right off the bat, silent generation. So I'm, I'm not going to be too silent today, but isn't that something we're called silent? But you're the millennial generation. Um, you're bright, you're multitasked, uh, you're multi -capa multifaceted capabilities, you're technology driven, you're team oriented, and you're the push button age. Did you see that little symbol for your generation? It's the push play, the play button. Uh, I don't know if that's the best, but that's it. That's what they say. But are you intentional? That's my interest today. You see, I'm not so different from you, except I've been down the road we have life a long time. And uh, I think there's a way that I can be, you can, I can have the advantage of that, but you could have the benefit maybe of some of those abilities that, that have, I have experienced and situations I've experienced that you don't want to pass by on your journey 
to make this passage very, very rewarding to you. I was born the sixth of five six other five children in my family with three girls and three boys. My father was an Italian immigrant. My mother was Italian by birth in America through Italian parents. And I was eight years younger than Eleanor DeBartolo McDaniel, who I honored up front here just a few minutes ago. I'm a product of my mother's faith and determination not to abort her baby before her serious condition of paralysis, which eventually made her a quadriplegic. Her faith in God caused her to refuse a medical abortion. With all odds against her, she went forward with total trust and faith that God would deliver baby and child, and he did that miracle. By the time I was three, though, she was totally paralyzed and not able to hold me, and so I have no memory of her touch. And she died when I was around nine of other complications. But God sent me a great family and a father who did their best, but God preserved me through his sovereign hand. I say that to you because I don't know your situation. I know I have been praying over all of your names for the last 30 or 40 days, every morning. I go down the list and read your name. So I hope God will speak to you this morning through this time we have together. At the age of seven, I fell in love with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And by his grace, at the age of 12, I had received the power of Pentecost in my life. In a wonderful Assemblies of God High School, in Texas, I found a new home, and God grew me into a young man with a calling for architecture. It was a profound experience that took place there as well, because <laughs> I met the person of my dreams at that young age. I know. She became my wife, the mother of my three children, but most of all, she taught me how to love and love others, and she linked me to her loving, godly family. Something you want to hang on and wait for because it's worth the wait. And you saw her just a few minutes ago. She's a treasure to me. God placed in me a determination, and I have named it intentionality, to endure all the circumstances that my faith and life could hand my way. My challenge for you this afternoon is for you to aggressively, with intention, lean into the wind of life and fix your heart and mind with the purposes of God. I know you believe and desire a meaningful walk with God the rest of your life. Well, I believe it's possible, but you'll probably need to think about doing it with, life, with your life's intentional purposes. That will make the difference. A life of intentional living, living starts with an intentional desire for a relationship with God. I was struck by what I began to think about and read when I was preparing these thoughts. And I began to look at the scriptures and check them out. But first of all, one intention I want to impress upon you. You need to realize that God the Father the great architect of the human family who sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins and gave us the Holy Spirit to work within us is looking at you and waiting and pursuing you. So surely you know him by now. But if you don't, I think this should be your very first intention is to get that right. You will discover that Jesus knows you in every detail about you, just like it says in Psalms 139. I know you've read that, probably it's a very popular passage, but have you ever thought about putting it on your screensaver and just having it there? Because I think in your pursuit and journey, you're going to need to remind yourself of the great wisdom God has about you. It says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down, when far away, you know my every thought. You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I am, you know what I'm going to say before I even say it. You both precede me and follow me. 
and place your hand of blessing on me. God is love. What all of us need is love. You really need it in your age, but we need it in every age we go through. We have challenges all the way in every area of our lives. So you cannot escape that intimate knowledge that God has. His knowledge is so wonderfully illustrated in that reference he makes in this passage about hidden places, like your mother's womb. He goes on to say, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It's amazing to think, <clears throat> excuse me, it's amazing for how making me so wonderfully complex. It's amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in utter seclusion. Can you imagine that? You saw me before I was born and scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. How overwhelming and delightful to get some idea of what, how God's loving knowledge is so profound and so complete. The singer ends that psalm by saying, God, continue to examine me and purge me from, the, from what hinders me from walking in your way everlasting. And then to wrap up, and it was mentioned this morning at the baccalaureate, chapter 29 always of Jeremiah and verse 11 through 13, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. We heard that this morning. They're plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's worth thinking about every day. In those days when you pray, I will listen. When you find me, when you seek me in earnest, I will be there. This is the plan of life for a victory of the journey, to gain the price. This is your day to establish yourself in the Lord, building through obeying his word and establishing your faith as a foundation intentionally. Do not take this journey any further until you have determined to walk in the knowledge and confidence of Psalms 139 and Jeremiah 29, 11. With these two scriptures as your intentional foundation stones, the future is brilliant and challenging and full of excitement. We must be intentionally battle ready. That journey is going to bring you to a new understanding of being prepared. But once you have established your faith, once you have established your confidence and know that how much God loves you, you'll be able to be in self-control in battle and alert. For your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And my favorite example of this is in 1 Samuel 17 and 43, where that rascal Goliath said, am I a, am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come to me with a stick? Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Wow. You're going to face some people in situations in your life that are gonna just speak in so similar terms, however, on a different subject, but they're going to confront you. And you can say, like David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. I can just think of that in many circumstances that my teenage grandchildren face. It's, it's going to be there, and I face it in my day in business, time and time again. How do I handle that? And then David says, and Israel will learn that the, Lord does not de that, does, that the Lord does not depend on weapons to fulfill his plans. He works without regard of human means. He will give un you unto us, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you. 
into our hands. Remember, our battles are mainly spiritual. It says in Romans 7, battling within our members of our bodies, waging war on our minds sometimes. Going across all of the internet and seeing things that we really, mm, we don't want to see, but boy, are they thrust in your face and my face as well. Not flesh and blood, this battle is, but against powers of darkness and spiritual forces. So put on the full armor of God, and you know what I'm talking about. For God will provide divine protection. I love that. I depend on that. I hope you do. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. He is our divine protection. Defense, he's our fortress, a hiding place, a refuge, and a shield. So, we have what it takes in him to do the job that needs to be done with intentionality. But the last intention I want to talk to you about is the intention that trusting in God for victory. Romans 8, 35 and 37 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or the sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In 1 John it says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, our intentional faith, will be applied. Who is it who overcomes the world except the one who believed that Jesus is the Son of God? The prize has been set for you. The journey has been established. You can run it with a few intentional decisions. The victory is sweet and is yours. So look back, in looking back, I say to you, class of 2012, when it comes to my journey, and I say to you, establish a life of intentional living, having intimacy with God, of remembering how he knows you and how profound his love is for you and his purposes. Secondly, possess intentional dependence on God, who will be your defense when you face the challenges all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thirdly, declare intentional confidence as through God, we are more than conquerors. This is one of those times in your life when you become aware that it's time for a paradigm shift. Maybe you're not reckless, but maybe you're not intentional. I want to motivate you to become intentional. You have all the tools at your disposal to be so. Today is a day of new beginnings in a new journey. The journey is yours. Live it intentionally. I'd like to close with a devotion that as I was reading it the other day, I just felt like I should read it to you. So you don't have to close your eyes, but just envision, if you would, our Father speaking to you. Let, uh, listen to me continually. I have to communicate to you so many, I have to communicate to you so many people and situations are in need of prayer. I am training you, class of 2012, to set your eyes on me more and more, turning out, just tuning out the distractions through the help of my spirit. Walk with me in holy trust, responding to my initiatives rather than trying to make things fit your plans. I died to set you free, and that includes freedom from compulsive planning. When your mind spins with a multitude of thoughts, you cannot hear my voice. You're going through that probably right now. A mind preoccupied with planning pays homage to the idol of control. Turn from this idolatry back to me and live abundantly intentionally. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help these graduates to remember their obligations to serve our world and lift up the name of Jesus to a lost and dying society. May they never tire in the joy of serving you and helping others. May they always have enough happiness to keep them joyful. 
enough trial to keep them strong, enough success to keep them eager, enough faith to give them courage, and enough determination to make each day special. May they have the hindsight to appreciate where they have been, enough foresight to see where they need to go, and enough insight to know when they have gone too far. We ask this for this class of 2012 in the name of Jesus. Thank you and congratulations. Solo Dio Gloria. Thank you. We are excited at this time in our program, uh, especially as we mentioned during our baccalaureate service this morning, to have two of our students from our Deaf Studies program to be graduating, along with all of the others. By virtue of the authority vested in me as president of Valley Forge Christian College by the Board of Trustees and by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I confer upon 11 graduates, the Bachelor of Social Work degree, 69 graduates, the Bachelor of Science degree, one graduate, the Bachelor of Religious Education degree, two graduates, the Bachelor of Music degree, 73 graduates, the Bachelor of Arts degree, with all rights, honors, and privileges, as well as the obligations and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. I confer upon five graduates the two-year Associate of Arts degree. Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts degree and the Bachelor of Arts degree please rise? The Associate of Arts in Bible, Krista B. Peel, cum laude, in absentia. Kimberly A. Shaw. <clears throat> General Studies, Dante D. Gibson, in absentia. Dominique L. Harris.
Heidi A. Link, magna cum laude, in absentia. Bachelor of Arts, Children's Ministry, Daniel J. Dillon. <laughs> Whitney L. Fendelander. Jessica R. Fletcher. Corinne M. Smith, summa cum laude. Christian Education, Michelle K. Bruno. Dylan D. Flickinger. Christina A. Sheets. Christian Ministries, Luke L. Brawler, in absentia. Deanne F. Dirks. Casey N. Gravatt, summa cum laude. William P. Hayes. Elizabeth S. Howell. Tyler S. Hunt, summa cum laude. Stacy L. Johnson, summa cum laude. Matthew H. Martin. Fabricio M. Pace, magna cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay R. Root. <laughs> Julie A. Strom. Nelson Varghese, cum laude. Lisa M. Williams, summa cum laude. Church music, Brooke A. Coyne, summa cum laude. Andrew P. Steinbach, magna cum laude. <clears throat> Intercultural Studies, Autumn D. Baker. Joshua S. Didden, in absentia. Adrian R. Dyke, summa cum laude. Bryce K. Carper, summa cum laude. Yeah, 
Catherine L. McInerney, cum laude. Kyle J. Shervani. <clears throat> Christina Sui, cum laude. Rhea K. Wolf. Pastoral Counseling, Alexandra E. Anderson, Magna Cum Laude. <clears throat> Michelle A. Centino. <clears throat> Rachel E. Damron. Rebecca N. Ferris. William D. C. Gwynn. Jacob J. Hildreth. G. Brian Milton. Marissa D. Shade, magna cum laude. Pastoral Ministry, Trinidad and Dino. Joel Aponte. James M. Armpriester, cum laude in absentia. Jason A. Bull, magna cum laude. Jenny H. Choi. Jason C. Crosby. Michael R. Edwards. <laughs> Jonathan C. Harris. Samuel Jung Yul Lee. <laughs> Kyle L. Manning. <laughs> Justin N. Magna, summa cum laude. Kalina D. Mojica. Addison M. Roberts, cum laude. Glenn H. Roussel, in absentia. Cameron L. White. Lucas W. White. Theological Studies, William H. Albright, cum laude. Dallas Michael Amico, magna cum laude.
Joshua K. Asedu, cum laude. Marco Talese. <clears throat> Urban Ministry, Anita M. Cardoza, cum laude. Alicia R. Perry, in absentia. Youth Ministry, Caitlin E. Barnhart. Jordan A. Clark. Michael T. Duffy. Aaron C. Ebach, cum laude. Benjamin L. Erickson. <coughs> David E. Jensen, magna cum laude, in absentia. Danielle N. Liller. Ruby Lopez. Joseph A. O'Malley. Shane M. Poocher. Douglas M. Smith, also receiving a Bachelor of Science in Digital Communications and Media. Holden Mark Tivinsky, magna cum laude. Heather C. Tewitt. Well, the candidates for the Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Religious Education, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work degree, please rise. Bachelor of Music, Music Performance Classical, Isaac H. Brooks.
Music Performance Contemporary, Chanel M. Chavers, magna cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Religious Education, Elementary Education, Private Certification, Cassandra J. Levere, in absentia. Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Krista M. Cartagena, summa cum laude. Rachel I. Craig, cum laude. Lori A. Gregan. Bradley M. Kujawa. <laughs> Brandon Kujawa. <laughs> Mary Beth C. Anyekwu, magna cum laude in absentia. Courtney E. Regal. <laughs> Jason Varkey. Talea N. Woodall. Andrew J. Young. Digital Communication and Media. Courtney R. Baldwin, cum laude. Kyler D. Brown. <laughs> Philip M. Camo in absentia. Joshua R. Davies. <laughs> Bryn Aaron Fredericks, cum laude. Alexander Y. Kranjek. Ryan A. Marshall. Joshua A. McGinnis, summa cum laude. Andrew P. Moore. Richard Sean Noble, cum laude. Gerson P. Perez. Nicole A. Roskowinski, magna cum laude. <clears throat> Ashley N. Starkweather. Jonathan D. Valentine. Allison F. Wengard. Yeah. 
Early Childhood Education, Claire M. Eiler. Nicole M. Finch, cum laude. Sarah E. LaFrance. Alisa M. Lamp. Chelsea K. Mason, summa cum laude. Brittany M. Reese. <laughs> Elementary education, Ashley N. Blocker. <laughs> Chad P. Dinkelacker, cum laude in absentia. Allison M. Fry, cum laude. <laughs> Daniel J. Hand, cum laude, in absentia. Amanda R. Huninger, cum laude. Taylor E. Marsh. Melissa L. McKechnie, magna cum laude. Shauna L. Michael, cum laude. Heather M. Miller. Christine M. Pereira. <laughs> Leah C. Setliff, magna cum laude. <laughs> Linda R. Simmons, cum laude. Lauren N. Wenklowitz. <laughs> Music education, Holly R. Glass. <laughs> Joshua S. Rosenberger, cum laude. <clears throat> Heather B. Twiss, cum laude, also receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Church Music. Psychology, Caitlin J. Antelik. Andrea Bautista. Alyssa R. Clark. Lorraine Cologne. Devon M. Curry, cum laude. Rebecca L. Gillen. <laughs> Liana C. Henry. <laughs> Radha G. Kirkland.
<laughs> Ashley K. Knudsen. Joseph L. Mello. Rachel M. Munn, magna cum laude. Maria A. Oriana. Mitchell C. Pegg. Alyssa J. Roberts. Georgia R. Stubbings, magna cum laude. Rebecca J. Viola, magna cum laude. Secondary English Education. Tracy M. Donnelly, magna cum laude. Kristen N. Jenkin, summa cum laude. Carrie L. Kozak, summa cum laude. Kelly M. Roos. <laughs> Stephanie Jean Saxton, summa cum laude. Samantha J. Steves, cum laude. The Bachelor of Social Work in Social Work, Angela N. Barbita. Eric L. Burkert. Jacqueline T. Cuomo, cum laude. Tiffany N. Duty, cum laude. Lindsay D. George. Kiana A. Jackson. Sonia Jakuki. <laughs> Rachel M. Martin, cum laude in absentia. Melissa C. Moran. <laughs> Bethlehem Tay. Nicole M. Young. Will all the graduates in the class of 2012 please stand?
you may now move your tassels from right to left. Now let's congratulate them. Class of 2012, you may be seated. We moved our program along a little bit more quickly at the beginning of our ceremony this afternoon. And before I invite Tom Reese, president of our Alumni Association, to come and welcome the class of 2012 into this prestigious organization, the Valley Forge Christian College Alumni Association. And then, as has been a tradition here at Valley Forge for, a, for many years, predating my coming, uh, I will have the privilege of sharing just a couple of minutes of farewell to our graduating class. But before we do, if you would turn in your program, you probably know it, but I would like us to sing together the first verse and chorus of great is thy faithfulness. We have had this song sung or played whenever we have broken ground on campus, whenever we have had the dedication of a facility on campus. I believe also on the day of uh, March 2nd, our Deaf Ministries program beginning. And I think it would be fitting if we'd sing it also today and maybe just so that everybody would be comfortable. Would you all mind standing together? Let's everyone stand. The first verse together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. if you would come please. A very special part of his welcoming of this class is that sitting within this class is his daughter Brittany as a member of the class of 2012. So you come wearing a number of hats today, don't you? Special day. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. What an amazing class. And uh, let me just say the favor of the Lord is upon you. I mean, we'll take this as a sign instead of a stormy future, a nice bright future. And uh, isn't that wonderful? I heard one of, uh, one of the alumni say that the tassel is worth the hassle. And as you are sit seated here today, we congratulate you. We congratulate you as parents. We congratulate you as friends, as faculty and staff, and now as fellow alumni. Uh, today, you, you join a class, a family of over 6,000 alumni around the world serving the Lord. And we just want to say how proud we are of you. We want to let you know we're praying for you, we're cheering you on, and we love you. And would you now join with me in this great privilege of officially welcoming the class of 2012 into the Valley Forge Christian College alumni family. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
I would like to ask not, just, not our graduating class, but all of the other alumni, and uh, we have had a tradition here when our alma mater song is sung that alumni stand, and with our hustle and bustle to get through our program, we neglected to ask alumni to stand. Uh, would you, any other alumni who are here, would you stand so we can recognize you today, alumni of this great institution? Please stand. Yes, welcome. Well, class of 2012, the time has come for a new beginning. Today has been a day to look back. We did that this morning in our chapel service. Hard work, faithfulness of God, look inside, make one final resolve to live with intention, as we've heard this afternoon, to look ahead, to anticipate a future, as Dr. Roden says, that is as bright as the promises of God. You will be going in all directions. We know that. Our flags remind us of that. Uh, someone slipped me a flag here this morning or this afternoon, and I need to take a look at that as to where that one is going to be. As I shook each of your hands, uh, I remembered just so many of you in the different places where we have met over these past years or before, watching you playing sports, leading with worship teams in chapel, acting in Kremple's Theater, running cameras in the chapel, working in my office for two years as work study, tasting the cake that you baked for Evie and me, meeting you in front of the Harrop Administration Building, welcome you to VFCC. I'm gonna say it one more time, our first class of deaf students graduating this year. Hearing you, hearing you say Santo, <laughs> and also hearing you announce athletic contests, uh, having your parents as students before you were born, praying for you for safe return from Iraq, your skill to design and tape nudges toward God, your passion for the homeless, for human trafficking, for live dead, for chaplaincy. You're praying faithfully each Tuesday morning over here in the Mason Chapel at seven o'clock, gathering around the altar, seeking God in chapel, seeing your passion for Phoenixville. I'm sad that your father cannot be here. He is in Tanzania. He might be watching us by video. If not, he'll certainly get a copy of this so he can experience this day as well as for you. Having you in an LDL group, and the list goes on, teachers, musicians, preachers, theologians, business people, media specialists, social workers, missionaries, men and women of God, class of 2012. You stand at the threshold with now each of you ready to step forward and the wait is over. An indescribable adventure is ahead of you. Two final words, one from a poet and one from an apostle. The poet's words, come to the edge, he said. They said, we are afraid. Come to the edge, he said. They came, he pushed them, and they flew. It's now time to fly. The wait is over. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the words of the apostle. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing, nothing, nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know and all of us know all the alumni that have ever graduated from Valley Forge Christian College know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And may all who come behind you find you faithful. Amen and amen. After the benediction, we would ask all guests, please remain where you are until the students have processed. Uh, Mr. Rick Dunham will be sharing in the uh, benediction. Uh, a number will be gathered over in this area if you want pictures with our architect speaker today, along with his wife, Pat. We'll be over in this vicinity over here if you'd like to have some pictures with our guest speaker today. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our executive director of development, Sam Luffy, is not with us in our service this afternoon because his wife, Becca, 
is uh, giving birth to their first child as we speak. <clears throat> so we'll let you know when that arrival comes. Mr. Duff. Well, many of you don't know me, but I am notorious for 25 and 30 minute prayers. Uh, if you all would stand, please, and gentlemen, if you would, uh, can they, should they remove their caps? Gentlemen, please remove your caps. And let's close this wonderful day in this ceremony in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for holding the weather and keeping it, Lord, to be sunshine and bright on these lives. Lord, as Proverbs 24 says, that it is by wisdom that a house is built. It's through understanding, Lord, that it is established, and it is through knowledge, Lord, that rooms are built and filled with rare and beautiful souvenirs. Lord, I pray that as we go through this building of life, that as we finish this room at Valley Forge, that you would bless these students and that they will go out and continue to fill their lives with rare and beautiful remembrances. Lord, I just pray that you would bless them, expand their territory, and everyone said? Amen. Everyone said? Amen. Everyone said? Amen. Amen.